Hey everybody, welcome again to another one of my math videos. In this video we're going to be going over quadratic inequalities. And I wrote for you a quadratic equality at the top of the screen that says x squared plus 3x minus 18 is greater than or equal to 0. And the first step in solving a quadratic inequality is exactly the same as sol solving a quadratic equation. So what we want to do is we want to change this greater than or equal to symbol and we want to replace that with an equal symbol and just solve this just like a quadratic equation. So I'm just going to copy the quadratic equation just exactly the way it is. So we have an x squared plus 3x minus 18. Once again, I'm going to replace this greater than or equal to symbol and I'm just going to make an equation and just put an equal sign to 0. So now what I want to do is I want to solve this quadratic equation. And the two most common ways to solve quadratic equation is by factoring and by using the quadratic formula. And I always liked to use factoring if it is possible because factoring is, in my opinion, much quicker than using the quadratic formula. Um, and this quadratic equation certainly is factorable. Um, so well, I'm going to use factoring to solve this uh, quadratic equation. So what we want to do is we want to pick two numbers that multiply to negative 18 that also add or subtract to positive 3. Um, so let's just start with factoring this and I'm going to make my two parentheses and I'm going to fill in my two x's which when multiplied together give us our x squared. Now once again I want to pick two numbers that multiply to negative 18 uh, that also add or subtract to positive 3 um, and certainly a positive 6 and a negative 3 multiply together to give us a negative 18 and 6 minus 3 also gives us a positive 3. And once you have factored the quadratic equation now you set your two parentheses equal to 0. So now we have x plus 6 is equal to 0 and we have x minus 3 is equal to 0. And if we subtract 6 from both sides we get x is equal to negative 6 and if we add 3 to both sides we also get x is equal to positive 3. So now we have solved the quadratic equation. We have two solutions x equals negative 6 and x equals 3 and after you're done solving you can move on to step number 2 and step number 2 is we want to make our number line. Um, so what I, what I like to do is I like to make my number line from negative infinity to positive infinity. And then I like to plot my two solutions which you just solved for. Um, so I'm going to plot my negative 6 and I'm going to plot my positive 3. And make sure that you always put the smaller number uh, to, the, to the left of the bigger number. Okay, so now let's go back to our original inequality. Uh, we have x squared plus 3x minus 18 is greater than or equal to 0 because there is a equal sign underneath the greater than symbol if there is ever an equal sign that means that the two test points are part of the solution they are included uh, so that because there's an equal sign underneath the greater than symbol that means we're going to put a closed circle around our two test points because these solutions are included if there was no equal sign then you would leave them with an open circle now I'm going to erase some of our work which we don't need anymore. And now what I want to do is I want to rewrite this inequality in factored form. And we already factored this earlier so I already know that x squared plus 3x minus 18 is equal to x plus 6 and x minus 3. And the inequality symbol stays the same greater than or equal to 0. So now moving on to step number 3. We want to pick our test points to test which intervals are valid. And if you look on our number line, we have three intervals. We have one interval in between negative infinity and negative 6. Uh, we have another interval in between negative 6 and positive 3. And we also have a, another interval from 3 to positive infinity. So what we want to do is we, will, we want to pick test points in each one of these intervals uh, to see if the interval is valid or not. So let's start off with the interval from negative infinity to negative 6. We can pick any number 
in between negative infinity and negative 6 to figure out if this interval is valid or not. So since we can pick any number in between negative infinity and negative 6, I'll just pick negative 10. Once again, for this interval from negative 6 to positive 3, we can pick any number in between negative 6 and positive 3 to test if this interval is valid. Uh, we certainly know that 0 is in between a negative and a positive number, so I'm going to pick 0 to test if our middle interval is valid. And the same thing from the interval from 3 to positive infinity. We can pick any number in between 3 and positive infinity to test if that interval is valid, so I'll pick positive 10. So now what you want to do is you want to plug your test points into your x values to see if the inequality is true or not. So I'm going to start with my negative 10, and I'm going to plug in negative 10 into my x and to see if the inequality is true or not. So everywhere there's an x, I'm going to put a negative 10. So we have negative 10 plus 6 multiplied by negative 10 minus 3 is greater than or equal to 0. Here we get negative 10 plus 6 is a negative 4, and negative 10 minus 3 is negative 13, is greater than or equal to 0. We certainly know that two negative numbers are a positive number, and a po any positive number is greater than or equal to 0, uh, but I will multiply these together just to be as detailed as possible. Um, negative 4 times negative 13 is a positive 52. Our sign stays the same, greater than or equal to 0. So if we plug negative 10 in for x, it makes this inequality true, because 52 is certainly greater than or equal to 0. So if you plug in negative 10, it makes the inequality true. Since negative 10 makes the inequality true, any number in that interval from negative infinity to negative 6 makes the inequality true, satisfies the inequality. So all of these numbers from negative infinity to negative 6 satisfy the inequality, so I'm going to shade in the entire interval. So now let's do the same thing with our second test point, 0. So I'm going to plug in a 0 everywhere there's an x. So the first parentheses is 0 plus 6, and the second parentheses is 0 minus 3. Once again, I plugged in a 0 everywhere there's an x. Inequality symbol stays the same, greater than or equal to 0. 0 plus 6 is positive 6, and 0 minus 3 is negative 3. The inequality symbol stays the same, greater than or equal to 0. 6 times negative 3 is a negative 18, is greater than or equal to 0. We all know that negative 18 is certainly not greater than or equal to 0, that inequality is not true. Um, since the test point 0 makes the inequality not true, it does not satisfy the inequality, the 0 test point is not valid. So any number in the interval from negative 6 to positive 3 is not valid. It's not part of the solution, so I'm not going to color in the interval from negative 6 to positive 3. So now let's do the same thing for our last test point, positive 10. So I'm going to plug a positive 10 everywhere there's an x, and the first parentheses is x plus 6, so that's 10 plus 6, multiplied by 10 minus 3 is greater than or equal to 0. 10 plus 6 is a positive 16. 10 minus 3 is a positive 7. Inequality symbol stays the same, greater than or equal to 0. Positive 16 multiplied by positive 7 gives us a 112 is greater than or equal to 0. 112 is certainly greater than or equal to 0, so the inequality is true. So since our 10 test point makes this inequality true, every single number in the interval 3 through positive infinity makes the inequality true and is part of the solution. So I'm going to color in the interval 3 to positive infinity. So our solution for this particular inequality is everywhere in the number line that's colored in. 
So our solution is from is from negative infinity to negative six or from three to positive infinity. And it's really common to write your answer in interval notation, so that's what I'm going to do. Um, so we start from negative infinity all the way up until negative six. Since there's a closed circle and negative six is part of the solution, I'm going to put a bracket instead of a parenthesis around negative six. Or, and the mass symbol for the word or is the union symbol, so I'm going to put a union in between. Or three to infinity. And since three is part of the solution, there's a closed circle around three. I'm going to put a bracket and a parentheses around the infinity. So here is our solution to the quadratic inequality. I want to go over a couple special cases in our next examples that might seem more complicated at first, but are not that bad.